Hey guys, I'm starting out a new financial channel with my co-host Michael Santanato. His channel is called Be Fire Become Financially Indestructible. And we're trying to get his new channel up to a thousand subscribers, so if you guys could go down there, the link is down below in the description. Also, the content's going to be released on his channel about two to three weeks before it gets released on mine. Again, the link is below, and now on with the show. What's up, party people? Michael Santanato here. How to become financially indestructible. Talking to the one and only Sandman. Talking about AI wrecking the job market and what on earth you can do about it. Sandman, how are you doing? I'm doing well. So I think we're in for a world of hurt. I think the average person has no idea what's coming down the pipeline. They think that this AI revolution is going to be like you know, the second industrial revolution with electricity or with the information technology revolution that we just experienced about 20, 25 years ago, where, you know, there were more jobs being created for data entry and on the internet. And I think this time with AGI, which is artificial general intelligence, which we may actually be only a year or two away from, that it's going to destroy a large portion of the workforce. So a lot of jobs are going to disappear. And I'm kind of in this panic right now where I, I see this coming. And what I've been doing is I've been buying as many like, you know, Alphabet, Meta, uh, Microsoft, N NVIDIA shares that I can get my hands on because these mm. are the companies that are going to destroy the jobs. But more importantly, they're going to they're going to be the outsourcing companies of the future. So say. KPMG does accounting and they want to replace their accountants mm -hmm. with AI. They're not going to develop their own in-house AI. What they're going to do is they're going to go to Microsoft and say, you know, you've been selling us software for the last 40 years. What we want now yeah. is for you to create a software product where we, we just have all the inputs for this data and it does all the accounting for us. The AI will do yes. all the accounting for us. So once that happens, there go all the entry-level accounts. They're gone. Right. And then yeah. and as the technology becomes more advanced, the middle management, the middle the, you don't need managers if who's you don't need a manager to manage an AI. Like it just it doesn't make any <laughs> sense, right? right? Like so that the yeah. managers are gone and then it slowly it's gonna eat away at the mid level accountants and then eventually mm -hmm. it's gonna eat away at the high end accountants. And eventually companies are just gonna become a lot leaner and yeah. Microsoft, let's just say, is going to export this technology to other countries, to other companies, and we're going to see a mass depot, uh, like de, like working, like um, I don't know what the word is, kind of unemployment, job declassification. Yeah, the, the jobs are going to disappear. So, what's yeah. what that's probably going to lead to is UBI for the majority of people just to survive, and then there's going mm -hmm. to be an asset class who owns the tech companies, who owns enough of these shares to basically benefit off of that productivity right they're gonna have to yeah, pay BlackRock. <laughs> well blackrock owns the assets but i'm talking about like you if say you and i have a million or two dollars in big tech right so if mm -hmm. as the value of these jobs gets stripped away those the shares in microsoft the shares in nvidia are gonna 5x 10x so we'll be sitting on the equivalent of 10 to 20 million dollars in purchasing power and then there's going to be people who didn't buy those shares who are going to be unemployed and virtually homeless. So right. I think they're going to force us to pay a little bit more, not a little bit, a lot more in tax to pay for the um, pay for the universal basic income for those people that are further oh. down. So, so you're saying higher capital gains taxes. You're seeing an increase in, in taxes on investments. Yeah, yeah. They, they have to go up. Like, like, I'm not, I don't want, I want to live in a society where there's a high level of trust and where I can walk out on the street without getting, you know, mauled because I've got money. Like, I, I don't want, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think short of that, short of living in gated communities or moving abroad to basically protect ourselves, if we want to maintain a high trust society, we're going to have to pay more tax. And I, and I think right now, right. the way the government's doing that is through inflation like the government's realized they need money so like they've kicked they're kicking up inflation they're they're printing money and they're devaluing currency so they're mostly robbing from people who don't own assets and by doing that the asset holders are getting wealthier at some point that yeah. ba balance of power is going to have to shift the other way otherwise 
you know, you're going to start to see people getting really upset. Like, I don't know if you've been paying attention, but there's like Waymo, uh, self-driving car company that's owned by Alphabet. And they just, um, they just had their, uh, one of their cars torched in San Francisco. It's a self fully 100% self-driving automated car. And it was torched, destroyed to burn to the ground. No way. No, it, it's what? because, so these, these neo Luddites are coming and they're going to start destroying the technology that's making them obsolete. And I think this is only going to continue to yeah. accelerate. What do you think? Well, we saw that. We saw that here in Toronto to an extent when Uber really took off. Right. So for people who don't know, we have a huge, or we had <laughs> a huge taxi driver, like population of the working force for newly landed immigrants. Right. A lot of them Islam or Muslims, Muslim, excuse me. And um, they blocked certain highways. They were protesting against Uber succeeding in Toronto, major, you know, population city here in Canada. And um, they they successfully protested and shut down certain parts of the highway for a few few days, you know, a couple of different times. And it was because they did not adapt to technology. You can't fight, you can't beat technology. The taxi industry was an industry that hadn't innovated for 50, 60 years. And these men who were completely sustaining their lifestyle and their family as new immigrants on the taxi, you know, income, they were protesting against Uber. Well, just to give you a history on this, my father was a taxi driver back in the 70s and 80s in Toronto. And he right. ended up selling his plate for around 100000 And he was upset about it because I, I gave him advice to sell the plate, right? And then he was like, he got pissed off because the plate a few years later went up to 200000 and now the plates are only like worth five grand, right? Because because the the what compri- what, what? How do, how can a plate be worth a hundred grand? Well, they were worth a hundred grand back then, right? Like back. Was you that difficult to okay? Get. So no, right. yeah, because there were only four thousand, five thousand plates in the whole city. So you you that's, ha- it? that's it. They controlled supply. So just like we're talking about before housing and how housing is being controlled, they controlled mm-hmm. plates. So. What would happen is my father basically sold his plate and the guy who bought the plate had like 10, 15 plates and he was getting money mortgaging to buy all these plates. And he ended mm-hmm. up paying like buying for like 10 or 20 plates. And then the price of these plates all collapsed to like five grand each. And he owed like millions yeah. of dollars to buy all these plates. So, oh my God, no kidding. So yeah, because so go ahead. What caused the collapse? Uber. Because once Uber showed up, anyone with a car could drive and become a taxi driver. There was no need for, yeah, there was no need for having a taxi or a place yeah. or registering your beer. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. but but the problem wow. is Uber has now been restricted in Toronto. They've restricted Uber to only so many uh, people as well. <laughs> like they're trying. Okay. You can, how do they do that? You can, you could, first of all, Toronto is such a joke of a city. Anything they can tax, restrict, shut down. You know, they shut down Airbnbs. Everybody was having condos and apartments with Airbnbs. Uh, that got shut down. Uh, anything Toronto can shut down tax or ticket, they're going to do it. Well, they're That's making the it thing. illegal for you to drive, ride one of those electric scooters in Toronto. Those are illegal in the city. Right. So oh you can't. God. So you got it's all these bike lanes. Joke. They put these bike lanes in that nobody's using. And then people are like, well, I'll pay like 800 bucks. I'll get an electric scooter. And I could literally be downtown in 30 minutes on a bike lane or I could be sitting in the subway for 45 minutes to get downtown. So what would I do? Yeah. I would just get on the little scooter and just go all the way down from the West end downtown half an hour. I'm downtown. I don't need a car. I don't have to pay for parking. I don't wow. have to pay for gas. I don't have to give money to the TTC for transit yeah. and I'm just on my own scooter and that's it. And now they're like, no, 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 we can't have that. But we can, we can, you can ride a bike. It's like, so, uh, but who's going to ride their bike all sweaty to go downtown to the office? Nobody, right? So they're, yeah. they're, they're talking about, you know, helping people and making things better, but they only want you to ride their transit, which is now one of the most dangerous things to do in the city because people are getting, right. you know, they're getting jabbed with pointy things on this, on the yep. subway, just at random, you're getting like random people coming up to you and, and going after you. So Anyway, we're talking about um, like AI. So if you look at Waymo, Waymo is the self-driving car company by Google or Alphabet. And now they're Mm -hmm. in Phoenix, they're in Austin, they're in San Francisco, they're in LA. 
eventually already that's, they're there they're, they're all over there yeah and they're and it's fully 100 percent autonomous so no drivers oh so what happens when it's rolled out across the entire united states and all major cities and then after that it's rolled rolled out across all global major cities what do you think that's oh, going oh. to do to alphabet shares it's going to make obviously the stock fly because it's super profitable it's like you know uber super profitable yeah, but um, it's going to piss off people. But what's what's interesting is, is again, you can't fight technology. You can't fight change. I'll tell you what. I'll share a really powerful quote that I read in an ec economics book. That, you know, I think it was 2019. Further solidified my view on crypto even further. It said, technology is like a genie that once let out of the bottle can never be put back in. Yeah, no, I totally agree so, with you. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful quote, and these the thing you're talking about the San Francisco with the burning the car and setting it on fire. It's like these are the initial stages of resistance of people resisting change, but you can't fight technology. You know, the wheel never went away. The computer never went away. I used to say when I was trying to help people understand crypto, like I couldn't pay you enough to get rid of your smartphone. I bet you anything, you know, you, you, you're addicted to it. You need it. You can't live without it. You have too much power. You're not going to be able to go back to those Moro Motorola peanut, whatever they're called, regular phones, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, I've, I've embraced technology most of my life. I started off as a dot com or back in the late nineties, early two thousands. And for about 10 years, I was making a living off of websites, selling advertising on them and, you know, basically doing SEO before it was even a thing. And getting up at the mm. top of the Google search results. And then, you know, about, let's say, 10, 15 years ago, I became a YouTuber. And I've been doing mm -hmm. that. And now YouTube is kind of waning and you're seeing all these people kind of retiring off of YouTube in the last few months. Because they're just like, it's not worth it anymore, right? And now now the next thing I've jumped to is I'm a Bitcoiner, right? So, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. these are all technological innovations and I encourage people to kind of understand them and get on these trains before the the mass of people get on it. Like as right now, there's so many people on on YouTube, and the only reason I've been able to continue to do what I'm doing is because I built up an audience, I built up um, like a following for a very long time, and that and and not only that, but I've had ten years to practice my craft. So I see new people coming in, and they're making all these mistakes that I kind of made at the beginning. And it's going to take them another five or 10 years to kind of figure out what's going on. But by then, that business model is going to not die, but it's going to slowly wither away or it's going to change into something else. Right. What um, to go back to AI and stocks, what stocks are you buying? What stocks is the Sandman buying for AI? Well, I've, I've talked about this before. It's IYW. Like, I don't buy individual tech stocks. I've been burned. I, I can't manage the stocks adequately like i don't have a team of people like assessing the risk of each one individually mm -hmm. so iyw is uh the iShares uh it's an iShares technology fund and it's owned by blackrock so it's managed by them and they basically like the top end is weighted mostly in the magnificent seven minus amazon and tesla and the mm -hmm. bottom end has a lot of smaller companies so you're getting exposure to the big and the small and this is in a this is a u.s fund so you'd have to you have to convert it over if you're in canada yeah. and mm -hmm. like i've bought individual tech stocks and i've been burned i i can't manage i don't manage the risk very well like just because it's a okay. good idea doesn't matter like i have to i have to moderate my risk by having other people manage my money for me that's brilliant you said something brilliant there just because it's a good idea doesn't mean I should do it, you know? Well, look, it, it, no, it's 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 good. Like, you know, I bought a couple shares, a couple companies that I was like, oh, these are profitable companies. And yet they are profitable, but their stock hasn't gone up. In fact, their stocks have been dipping further and further down. And, uh -huh. you, and you, you know, like, for example, PayPal. PayPal's PE is, keeps dropping and stock has been falling. And it doesn't make any sense. It could be just be a short attack. It could be something else that the... Um, something else that the money managers know that I don't. So mm -hmm. I I can't I can't understand the dynamics of the market. That's not my industry. So for me, no. 
I just buy an index or I just buy an ETF and I just let them manage right. it. And I find an Beautiful. ETF that's been the best managed for the last 10, 15 years. And I keep going with that. Beautiful. Okay, last question about AI and jobs. You said a big percentage is going to get wrecked. You know, the job market's going to get wrecked by AI. What percentage do you think? I think inevitably it's going to be all jobs. All jobs are going to... <laughs> like, look, it's it, look, on a long enough time scale. Okay, so if you look at Sam Altman is the guy who, uh, who creates... Open uh, AI. Yes, mm -hmm. open AI. So he's actually already talking about... Um, automating robots so mm -hmm. eventually you're even plumbers and electricians i know i know some plumbers and electricians are listening to this and laughing it's like no way it's like well if they're already replacing cab drivers and that's just the start like eventually those jobs will go away too but everything is on a timeline right so the first things that are going to disappear are going to be like your typical office droog right he's just going to be like i don't know what to you know like it's just it's all data entry or it's just you mm -hmm. know, ma management, I mean, that's all, that's all going to go. Then you're going to look at retail yeah. employees and look, the, the, the advantage of AI is it's going to cause deflation, which means eventually, uh, prices have to fall because right. if automation does all this work, then s there are no salaries, but the, now we're talking about economic dynamics here. And if the prices fall, the government can't have that because it needs more and more money in the system to keep everything lubricated. And so it's going to keep printing money. It, it, yeah. Governments print into oblivion, especially when they have access yes. to a printing press. So, Which they do. <laughs> yeah. So AI is going to force governments to print their currencies into oblivion. And so the only way mm. to protect yourself is to own the assets. And But the problem with that is if the governments also tax the assets heavily and say your assets go up 99 times their current value, they're still going to try to take a huge chunk of those of those of that purchasing power of those assets so mm -hmm. so you have to be kind of you kind of have to use you know advantages like tax-free savings accounts 401ks rsps um mm -hmm. roth iras you have to buy yeah. the the fastest growing tech companies in those because then right. the government is basically set up uh, those to protect you from the government right like that's that's the way i look at it it's like the 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 drag yeah. go ahead yeah, you got, you're right. You have to have a hedge against inflation because a, inflation is a tax, basically, essentially, right? Yeah. It's uh, Robert Kiyosaki calls it a tax on the poor. But but AI and technology will produce deflation. Technology produces deflation. It produces, you know, costs going down. So you're right. The way you get ahead is by owning the asset so that your money grows faster than inflation, which it has to. But then the government is there waiting at the finish line for you to make all this money on your assets, like, you know, like a, like a and greedy, you anyway. yeah. like a greedy wife. She's just waiting there at the yeah. finish line. She's coming for the best men, right? She's going to take everything you have. So what you have to do is you get your money in the tax-free savings account. Then, then she's looking at it like, what's this? And you're like, well, this is what you told me I could put my assets yeah. in to protect me from you. Well, but yeah. you're not supposed <laughs> to actually do it. It's like, well, I did it. It's like. Well, you yeah. can't do it. It's like, it's done, right? So I, I think, go ahead. You also need a prenup. You also need to not get married in the first place. You also need Bitcoin on a hard wallet that's stored away somewhere. Well, you know, no one knows about. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, that, that's, that's obviously unspoken, right? Like, it's like, you know, it's, uh, that, well, I mean, that's why Elizabeth, the devil Warren wants to basically make it so that you have to report your hard wallet as if you were a bank reporting Love their that. earnings it's insanity yeah you need offshore banking you need offshore accounts you need panama well i was Bahamas. obama said that you know like bitcoin is like people having a swiss wallet a swiss bank account in their pocket that's what he said that's right so that's right that's a good quote yeah yeah awesome so own the assets so you don't get destroyed by inflation and make sure that those assets are as tax protected as possible. Obviously, you can't protect them 100%. And then be prepared to, like, if you get this massive windfall, be prepared to pay some of that back so that people don't starve and that UBI kind of, uh, mm -hmm. you know. But look, even with UBI, I think you're going to see people's standard of life go up, even though they're on welfare. 
Like AI is going to put people on this UBI welfare. And like if if things are now 10 times cheaper than they were before, but you're getting 20% of your former amount of money based on how much the government is paying you, you're now double your your you're now your income is now technically doubled. So but what'll happen is the quality of life on the for the people that own the assets is going to be out of this world. We're going to be able to travel to space. We're probably going to be able to use anti-aging technology. We're probably going to mm-hmm. have access to like incredible things. But the average person mm-hmm. is probably going to be living a life that's two or three times better than it is now, but they're just not going to have access to being able to take a weekend trip to the moon or something like that. Oh, poor people. Like yeah. That. They'll just... They'll, you, have, you have free income via UBI, but you can't take a trip to the moon. Yeah, like they'll have to slum it in like their Waymo. They, they won't be able to have their own personal conveyance, right? That, that'll like... Right. Right. And they'll have to sell a kidney to get it. Well, look, here's, here's another thing. Like AI, what it does to airplanes, what it does to hotels. So for example, say you and I want to go to New York. Well, instead of getting on a plane and heading to New York... You know, and going to the airport, going through baggage check, spending two hours in security, spending an hour and a half on the flight. We could just get, we order like a self-driving box van or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's a bed inside, a little tiny bathroom. You just go to bed. You get, you know, you go to bed at like whatever, 10 o'clock and you wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning and you're in New York and you've been completely well rested. So that eliminates a business idea. It's an absolutely amazing business idea. So we're so we're <laughs> motels are dead, hotels are dead because now you don't need them anymore. Uh, right. Like airlines are going to short haul airlines are going to get obliterated, and then on top of that, mm. all the fast food places because now you don't you while you're sleeping you're not eating, mm-hmm. right? So you're not driving, stopping to get McDonald's, stopping at a motel, like all those businesses along the interstates are going to get destroyed. And then Man, there's so much change happening. And then think of it this way: because AI will be able to drive faster on less roads and be more efficient, the roads won't have to be three or four lanes wide; they can only be two, because all the cars will be communicating with one another and like speeding up the process of flow of traffic. Yes, just like in Minority Report. Okay, yeah. And so now imagine truck drivers automated away. So now you don't even need the truck drivers. So all the truck stops are gone. All of the working girls that have like their Nevada like brothel set up, they don't they will be out of jobs because now all the truckers won't be there to like peruse their wares, right? Like that's all yeah. that's all gonna Service disappear. Thing. Yeah. Man, we're talking about a massive revolution, a massive job change. And, well, and then here think of the, okay, so let's see you, you take the lanes away by half. Well, that means that yeah. half of the road workers are gone. Because now you don't oh, need to yeah. maintain the road networks. Because now the well, road about, networks they're unionized. What about the unions? Well, when businesses will just decide to like say we're we're bankrupt or we're changing a business model or whatever. Like it's the unions will fight, but they're going to lose because like the countries and the jurisdictions that are the most efficient are going to attract more capital to them. And then the the ones that are inefficient and bloated and paying out massive salaries and pensions are going to go broke, like, especially with, mm. with automation coming. And I'm not gotcha. even talking so about bankruptcy. like, yeah. What about automating yeah. construction workers at some point, maybe 20, 30, 40 years down the road? Yeah. I don't think even 40 years. Like I saw this one amazing video, you know, of this, uh, AI robot construction worker who's like throwing scaffolding, heavy hundred pound steel bars, like it, like they're feathers, like they're dog food. To the guy up on the scaffold and he jumps up to the other scaffold and he throws it to the other guy on the scaffold and he throws it to the other guy on the scaffold and then the actual human is like nailing in the boards but the robot is like throwing these 100 pound steel bars like they're nothing and he's dancing in the process you know? well it, it, what, what happens if the robot picks the guy up and throws him up in the air off the building like who's gonna who's That's, liable for that right like, oh <laughs> my god this is so good like if you've ever seen the movie the animatrix it's the prequel to the matrix and there's two episodes that are about 20 minutes each and they show the the ai revolution and the machine revolution before the machines revolted and created the matrix 
Have you ever seen that? Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've got a copy of it. And it, it's really interesting because Amazing. humans wouldn't react that way. Like, I think what, what like there's a line from the first Matrix film where Agent Smith says, you know, this is about civilization. And he said, mm-hmm. this is, you know, it was your civilization. Now it's our civilization. It stopped yes. being your civilization when we started doing the thinking for you. And oh, what's really God. scary is um, Eric Schmidt and Harry Kissinger, they wrote a book that just came out, like, I think it was like a year ago. I don't know, somewhere around there. And in the book, they're talking about how AI is going to make the majority of humans incredibly stupid because it's going to do everything for them. It's going to, yeah. it's going to not, you know, it's not just going to help us navigate on the roads and, you know, you plug in your, your ways or your Google maps in, but it's going to like organize your day. It's going to tell you what to eat today. It's going to tell you yeah. what to say on an interview. It's so humans ability to like be creative and think, think is going ourselves. to be diminished. And yeah. like, even us, even if we were highly open and creative, we can't compete with a machine that's got an IQ of 200 or 300. We can't, do, we can't compete. More. Yeah, exactly. And, and if it does things in seconds, I used chat GPT probably four times today. At okay. My birthday. Just, just four times. You know what I mean? And it did what would have taken me a couple of hours and it did it in seconds. Yeah. What were you doing? I was creating, that's a good question. I was, <laughs> this is actually weird. <laughs> I was using chat gpt to create a script for an ai video of an ai avatar to read how's that i'm confused so so i used ai to use ai (laughs) yeah yeah. so you're making a script for something for like a text to voice reader that was going to produce something that was going to talk yeah, basically, I used ChatGPT to create a script that another AI would read yeah. on video yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, later, you know, yeah. like an AI generated. Well, how, how did that turn out? Was it any good? Fucking good, yeah. I told it what to, I told it what to, uh, obviously, I made the prompt, but I, the only part that I really created was the prompt, and then I had to write what I want the dress to be, what I want the gestures to be, the skin color, the facial uh, expressions and the, um, like facial hair, stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, this is what we're talking about. Like the, the job of the future is not going to be, uh, to, to create, it's going to be to prompt, to prompt the AI mm-hmm. to create what you want it to create. So, right. Yeah, you're right. Because a couple of months ago and even last year when, you know, everybody was using chat gbt and it exploded instantly i saw all these facebook ads for uh, you know a hundred dollar product or a fifty dollar product of the the 10 best prompts you've never heard of or how to hack the ai with the better prompts you've never thought of you know I, like i've been seeing these ads for this uh person who basically they spent a hundred dollars on ai and the ai built the business for them and the business is generating like two thousand dollars profit a month and they just asked yeah. the AI to build the business for them. So I, I believe that. That's I want to know about those. We can do another video on studying those. Maybe we'll test them. If some people in our audience will pay for it, we'll all right. test it out. Sounds but, good. But somebody still needs to, you know, take the actions to do the things, right? Some of them, I think. Yeah, for sure. But I like the idea. All right. So. Who out there in YouTube land will pay for us to review these businesses? We'll do it happily. (laughs) Well, that's it. If you want these videos two weeks before I release them here, then check out the Financially Indestructible channel in the description. It's right near the top. If you have any finance-related topics that you want us to cover, then please leave them in the description. Michael and I both do coaching, and you can reach us through the links below too. Anyways, enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.